Awesome. Thank you so much, Evelyn. And I'm so happy to see a lot of um, familiar names uh, that have dialed in today. So again, I can't be more appreciative of the support. Um, also, Google just told me that it's International Women in Engineering Day. So I think that's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna just do a call out on that. So hopefully um, you celebrate that in your own way today. So um, I'm not the best at PowerPoint. So you know, I'm going to do my best at just kind of presenting in the most visually appealing fashion um, by playing from the start. We'll see how that goes. Um, after the uh, presentation, Liz and I um, will cut on our cameras and we can take Q&A. Um, I think as rehearsed, we were about 30 minutes. So everyone will have time for coffee after this before the Palo Alto workshop. Hello, we hope you're enjoying the 2021 ISSA Triad of North Carolina Security Summit. I'm Lori, and I will be co-presenting with my friend Liz. Our presentation aims to be entertaining and informative. It's titled, Applied Structured Analytic Techniques, How Not to Break the Business. Yeah, one of our big projects is gonna be policy are. reviews. Left so. and right on my screen, my colleague they... Liz Fulp, she is making big waves on the cyber scene. She works as a security operations analyst at a global Fortune 500 retail organization headquartered in Winston-Salem. She has an admir admirably nerdy 4.0 GPA and is a cert hustler. She inspired me to do better, study more, and keep climbing. I'm Lori. I really enjoy being an active member of the local cyber community, including mentoring our future cyber practitioners. Thanks to the ISSA Triad Chapter for sponsoring this event and providing knowledge, knowledge sharing opportunities for our cyber fanatics. Moving across to the right of the screen is Louie the puppy for good luck. And lastly, a call out for any trolls or haters in the audience today. Sit back and relax. No sharpshooting, no mansplaining, and don't inter disrupt the positivity happening at this summit. People are here to learn, share, network, and grow. We are all volunteers and invested in this community. Be kind to each other. Thanks. Hey everyone, my name's Liz. I received my associate's degree in network security data assurance at Guilford Technical Community College. I plan on attending University of Maryland for my bachelor's degree in cybersecurity. And I currently work as a security analyst at a Fortune 500 company. I hold the following certifications, AWS Cloud Practitioner, CompTIA Security Plus, and CompTIA CYSA. I also have a DIFFER publication linked in the slide, and I participate in the ISSA Women in Cybersecurity and Girls Who Code. Hey everyone, it's Lori again. I've been in the cyber game since 2003 when I joined NSA and fell in love with espionage and hunting terrorists. Since my glory days, I've migrated to the commercial side and currently enjoy making power moves in the financial vertical. My favorite part about cyber is being a mentor. I learned so much from people like Liz and people like you. It's very rewarding, so thank you. I work at the Sands Institute part-time as faculty in their Master's of Science program. If you're looking for a bachelor's or master's degree in, um, and five to eight Sands certifications, check them out. I'm a bit of a chronic student myself. I have a Master's of Arts, a Master's of Science, and I'm defending my PhD this October. Yay! The more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. So it's a vicious self-looking ice cream cone type of situation. This is an obligatory slide, so we don't get fired. Read it, thanks. Each of you has generously given us time in your day. Time is a precious, precious commodity, so we intend to make this worthwhile. The information we will be sharing this morning will enable you to impress your colleagues, impress your boss, and most importantly, impress yourself because you're valuable and capable of doing great things. In talking about applied structured analytic techniques and how to employ them to not break the business, you will be reminded of the sticker shock of costly mistakes resultant from poorly informed decisions. Some poor decisions equate to people being fired or cyber budgets getting slashed. Just don't be that guy. 
further, when you have to make a tough decision, you want to be able to defend it after the fact, because you can't make everyone happy. So inevitably, someone will be upset or irate about a decision that you make that affects them, and you'll want to defend yourself. Not saying that I don't love auditors, but in the event of an audit, you want to demonstrate you exercise a rational thought process, not an any, meeny, miny, mo methodology. When making expensive cyber decisions. Lastly, when you make a boss decision and you know it's awesome, the accolades will come. We all love Scooby-Doo snacks. So take the credit when you do something awesome, like make a critical decision and everything works out because that's your moment and you deserve it. The so what is that we feel that structured analytic techniques can help you make the best cyber decisions when it matters most. We encourage you to listen, think about, and reflect on the information shared during our brief time together in hopes that they benefit, benefit you in a decision point in the future. Agenda slides are awesome because it primes you for how much you've gotten yourself into. Do you ever look at the lower right-hand corner of a slide deck to see if there's 120 slides, and then you realize you overcommitted and you panic and search for an exit? Well, it's okay. We have like 20 slides. So if I do my cowboy math right, you're already 30% finished. Here's the palatable menu. Only good stuff served here. We have a three-phase approach to dropping knowledge today. We are going to facilitate some education so that you may learn about two types of structured analytic techniques, diagnostic and decision support. We are going to demonstrate how to put them into practice. This would be the stumble phase of the crawl, walk, run model. Thirdly, we will encourage you to think and consider additional cyber scenarios and complementary analytic techniques, a matching game per se, or perhaps more of a roulette. As a cyber practitioner, cyber leader, cyber fangirl, whatever, you will face decisions. We want to empower you to make the best decisions with a toolkit that you've at least heard two people drone on about so that you experience optimal outcomes in these scenarios. Being successful is about doing great with the information and skills that you have. This is a pathway. As alluded to, we'll be sharing information regarding two types of structured analytic thinking, diagnostic and decision support. There's a gazillion types of thinking techniques. We're, we're destroying the pinata basically one whack at a time. So today we'll be discussing these two types. Diagnostic techniques help you define and scope a problem using the scientific process of formulating and testing hypotheses. Decision support techniques serve as mental whiteboards to examine the contextual variables of a decision. By classifying analytic, analytic techniques and decision make, a decision maker can quickly route decisions through the proper channels, avoiding delays and ensuring an appropriate decision is executed. It's easy, just remember, diagnostic equals scientific process, decision support equals mental whiteboard. Diagnostic techniques help you define and scope a problem using the scientific process, formulating and testing hypotheses. Some diagnostic techniques include competing hypotheses, offensive analysis, and pre-mortem analysis. Competing hypotheses is a method of scientific reasoning where the practitioner generates multiple competing hypotheses and systematically eliminates them, keeping only the ones that cannot be refuted. The remaining hypotheses help to frame the uncertainty of the problem and help the decision maker to categorize and triage relevant information to identify analytic paths to reduce that uncertainty. Offensive analysis is organic to cybersecurity. It is focused on thinking like the adversary and anticipating their behavior. This technique is great for perceiving and forecasting threats. Pre-mortem analysis is the pause before deciding to ask, what could go wrong? 
This technique encourages you to challenge your conclusions and entertain the possibility that you could be wrong, to deconstruct the failure before it occurs, um, to ensure you are considering all known failure points. Each of the structured analytic methodologies offers unique values surrounding evidence, identification, and consideration. Competing hypotheses are compatible with technical decisioning and when the decision is so important that you cannot afford to be wrong. The analytic method is particularly useful when you need an audible trail to show relevant information considered. The offensive analytic technique enables a leader to leverage the adversary's perspective to identify root causes and predict future actions or next moves and progress towards attribution. The promortum analysis technique reduces the element of surprise by reverse engineering potential failures to account for cause and error. When utilizing these structured analytic techniques for solving cyber problems, recognize and consider the below to avoid pitfalls in your decision process. Competing hypotheses is subjective to human error, bias, or assumption. Unbalanced or incomplete data to refute hypotheses is likely to occur. Predicting an opponent's moves using black hat analysis is difficult. It requires understanding the adversary with high accuracy and you have limited insight of garden information. Promortum analysis provides a variety of input from team members. This can snowball into a multitude of what if scenarios resulting in delayed decision making. Further, as new information is contributed, it may prompt recalculations of data or re-examination of evidence, adding time to the decision process. Decision support techniques serve as mental whiteboards to examine the contextual variables of a decision. Some decision support techniques include force field analysis, impact matrix, and SWOT analysis. Force field analysis is essentially a weighted pros and cons list, which informs the decision-making strategy concerning which situational variables will strengthen their position or which ones to focus on to mitigate opposing forces. Impact analysis aims to estimate the impact of the decision beyond the immediate participants and how it will affect the future state of things. SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, uh, SWOT analysis technique examines the strengths, weaknesses, affecting a team's ability to achieve a goal. Strengths and weaknesses are compared against identified opportunities and threats that would either facilitate or impede reaching that goal. When utilizing these structured analytic techniques for solving cyber problems, recognize and consider the below to avoid pitfalls in your decision process. Force field analysis is based on estimated scores representing opposing forces of an argument. These forces driving changes and those forces restraining change. Essentially, you make a list for each force, decide if any force neutralizes one another and examine what's left. In this kind of risk math, it could be easy to simply count which force has the most arguments and side with that side. You must remember that each listed argument should be given weight of importance. And this must be considered when evaluating the scales and determine an overall score for decision making. Impact analysis is based on the projected impact a decision is likely to have on, or, on an organization and stakeholders. And with any estimation, the projections are only as accurate as the data available or those evaluations. This technique may need to be iterated as data concerning the decision change or become more readily available. SWOT analysis is simple, easy, and widely used. However, it is ideal for single decision points or singular goals. It focuses 
on that single decision or goal without weighing the costs and benefits of alternative means of achieving the same goal. It's linear and tunnel vision. It doesn't really address the bigger picture element. GI Joe says, knowing is half the battle. So choosing the best structured analytic technique is anchored in knowing about a variety of techniques, their advantages, and pitfalls. This presentation only highlights a few of the multitude of analytic techniques. We encourage you to continue learning and practicing a variety of them in your cyber decisioning, in an academic setting, at work, or wherever it may be helpful. For this presentation, we'll be determining between the two main types of structured analytic techniques we've discussed this morning, diagnostic and decision support. Here are some helpful hints when considering which structured analytic technique to use when fielding cyber problems. Rely on your experience, the knowledge, familiar familiarity, and level of comfort in practicing an analytic technique will be most helpful when considering which technique to apply. Go with what you know, especially if the decision is time sensitive. Consider available data. Your decision will be as good as the information you have when making it. So the data that's available to you during the decision process is so important. Consider the data you have, its credibility and its perishableness. These elements influence data quality. It's also helpful to think about the data that you don't have. Where are your knowledge gaps? Can you enable acquisition of additional data during your decision window? More data is always better. Consider the decision type. Decision technique compatibility only exists oh, okay. uh, creativity. There are no static map, there's no static mapping of cyber problems to analytic techniques on a huge chart somewhere at a cyber university. Intuition and logic will guide you in aligning techniques with cyber problems. We'll practice a few to show you how easy it is. Keep the outcome slash goal in mind. An important component of solving cyber problems is asking the right questions. So investing the thought and time into posing the right questions surrounding the cyber problem at hand is key to making informed, awesome decisions. You need to challenge yourself and ask, will this decision enable the goal? Will me deciding which internal firewall solution to deploy impede local app traffic, which is critical to the business? My goal is to secure business critical apps. Do I need to ratchet down internal traffic flows? Maybe but maybe not at the expense of critical functionality. Applying techniques to cyber scenarios, we finally get to flex and put philosophy into practice. We are going to step through a few cyber scenarios of which could be decisioned using a number of structured analytic techniques we've discussed today. There are almost no wrong answers. It's a thinking exercise. Can't fail at thinking, it's not a sport. We will be describing a scenario concerning malware eradication and how to avoid this going six ways of sideways. Come on, you've been there. You've deleted a Windows utility using an EDR. It's okay. Next, we will describe a threat hunting scenario. Everyone wants to threat hunt, but have we really applied some structured thought about how and why we do this? We all want threat hunting glory and trophy stories. But threat hunting missions and calendars should be thoughtfully decided upon because hunting takes time and time equals money. Thirdly, we will describe a scenario surrounding the denial of external media within an environment. This could upset a lot of people who quote, need their USBs, dongles, doodads, external peripherals. Change is hard and people don't like it, especially if it inconveniences them. Cybersecurity folks can be revered as the nope people, as in, nope, you can't do that. So if we are going to ruin Joe Average's day, then we need to have legitimacy to back that decision because he will inevitably complain to someone about it who will tattle to our boss. When, when, when somebody, uh, when I'm at work, when I'm asking, I 
they just are holding the phone to set up a mask. Cyber decision number one. Should I ban this malicious file hash across the enterprise? A malicious file hash is discovered via endpoint detect and respond. Corroborating cyber threat intelligence indicates that the file hash has been involved in reported adversarial attacks as part of tactics, techniques, and procedures. Using the competing hypotheses technique, the analyst can discern if the file hash is a key component of this attack method or a native Windows process and therefore should not be deleted from the environment. So if a file is characterized by the EDR as malicious, how can it be a benign Windows process? Wait, what? EDRs have antivirus components and AVs are only as effective as their signatures. Malware morphs, signatures expires, and false positives are a thing. So it could happen. Or more likely, there is a legitimate malicious file and you accidentally select and ban the Windows process that spawned it. Uh, anyways, using the competing hypothesis technique, this enables you to examine a multitude of what ifs, uh, what if scenarios, and incorporate local detail details before you make your decision. For example, in the picture on the screen, um, reading light, right to left, actually reading left to right. If the file is malicious, it could be part of an adversarial attack, so we should delete and ban the file hash. In the middle row, going left to right, the file could be benign, could be native to Windows. Maybe we should add it to the approved list. Or behind door number three, the file is anomalous, mysterious, potentially unauthorized software. Uh, maybe we should delete and ban that file hash too. PowerShell can be used by threat actors for advancing against malicious objectives. PowerShell is used legitimately for business purposes by internal teams. Currently, PowerShell logging is not enabled. By using an impact analysis matrix, you can visualize the stakeholders levels of interest and impact to make the best overall decision. Using the impact analysis technique, you can see and itemize the stakeholder groups and their respective level of interest and anticipated impact severity. Would you threat hunt for malicious or anomalous PowerShell in your environment? Would anyone care? Does it align with broader business, security, or IT objectives, goals, or initiatives? A policy amendment was recommended which would deny external media usage in the production environment. Promortum analysis can allow consideration of multiple stakeholder perspectives and respective concerns to inform the decision, such as what could go differently than expected, what unintended consequences could occur, or will this be an issue in the future? Regarding the external media exposure scenario, the pre-mortem analysis technique illustrates the stakeholder perspectives and concerns, including the business units, our friends and help desk, or end user experience if your organization is fancy, supply chain and other global partners, and of course, our cyber squad. Using this technique shows that as the decision maker, you are being objective and cognizant of the larger team. It's easy to see a problem from your own lens and make decisions in a bubble. This technique reminds us to look beyond our swim lanes and act in the best interest of the organization. Well guys, we've come to the end of our cyber rainbow, but here's what we've covered. We've shared our knowledge regarding structured analytic techniques and the art of intentional decision-making. We've also talked through making cyber decisions, leveraging structured analytic techniques. Remembering that the best technique is the one that you have. And finally, 
We hope you have loved feeling inspired and empowered to make and defend your cyber decisions and continue to make positive changes in cyberspace. Here are some resources concerning structured analytic techniques. There's a really great book, there's a really great paper, and in your cyber circles, I'm sure you have really great mentors, colleagues, and cyber, commu cyber community friends that you can talk and discuss and practice structured analytic techniques with. Okay, Evelyn, those are our slides for today. Um, Liz and I are online in able and welcoming of any questions. Thank you so much. Yeah, any questions for uh, for the ladies? We must have done a really good job, Liz. No questions. Or maybe we need to assign some homework. <laughs> Well, we did um, link our Twitter handles in the slides um, and Evelyn, you do have our email addresses. Um, so if anyone thinks of anything or wants to further discuss um, application of structured analytic techniques um, to cyber problems, I would love to grab coffee with anyone who wants to chat about that. Um, like I said, you know, everyone here is a resource, so um, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank and you I so much. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I didn't uh, see in the chat. I didn't know if there were any questions in the chat. Nope, that was um, that was Jeff right. saying great job. Yay. Yes, absolutely great job. Thank you so much. And like I mentioned, we'll have this uh, recording up soon, so uh, folks can actually reference it, um, and we'll we'll send it to folks that uh, potentially missed it as well. And um, just thank you. That was a wonderful um, session. Really You're appreciate welcome. your time. I just want to th say thanks to everyone for giving us your time and attending. I know they truly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. Great job, guys. Thanks, Latik. All right, Evelyn, I'm going to go check out some of those sessions I missed yesterday. Thanks for sharing the link in chat.
Hey guys, were you holding on for any reason? <laughs>